what we're seeing now is that during that stage, that's when you're releasing the toxic proteins that build up that are responsible for Alzheimer's disease, mm. amyloid beta. That gets cleared out if you activate your glymphatic system. Yeah. So for the better part of three and a half, four years, I pretty much had working out taken from me. It's not that I didn't do it, but like when I did it, it was a home workout because I was building this business at the time. I always felt like shit and I couldn't do anything that I wanted to do. I started getting all kinds of injuries on my body too because my joints were just dead. So those are still there right now. But when I was, while I was building the business, I was also increasing stress like crazy because, mm. you know, I'm editing till 4 or 5 a.m. in the morning. I'm getting up at 10, 10 30. This gets into the natural light stuff you and I were mentioning at the beginning with, you know, wearing a mask, which I wasn't doing at the time. And so I was just constant, like it was, it was like it, it was an exponential explosion of all kinds of problems in my body at the same time. And I was always in a bad mood, mm. always, mm. you know, somehow we made this happen and that's great. But when I got up to Hoboken last fall, I at least was like, I joined the gym here. I was at least getting in there. A few times a week, my workouts were shit compared to what they used to be. Yeah. But it was like getting myself back a little bit. I still had all the symptoms from the allergy stuff because I hadn't started treatment on that. And then in late November, I started doing the weekly allergy shots, mm. which has changed the game for me. But that about a month later, it was Christmas night. I realized like I was still feeling like shit and I was editing something at 4 a.m. Mm. on Christmas night. And I was like, we got to stop this. Yeah. 100% like this can't go on like this. We have to find a new way. And when I, I was down at my parents' place for Christmas, so when I came up here two days later, I started waking up at 6.35 a.m. I think I started at like 6.55, but I got it down to 6.35 within a month. And I was in the gym by 7.10 or 7.15 every day. I've done that six days a week since then, minus when I had an injury for 11 days. And my... I mean, to say nothing of like, I finally am starting to look like myself a little bit again, but mm. my energy levels and my ability to do this job and feel better all day, in addition to the allergy shots, thank God, working, it is insane. So yeah. I, I always swore by exercise, but like once it was, I, it's not that I took it for granted. It's just like it was taken from me because shit happened to my body. Once it was taken away and now I've come back around to do it again, I will triply swear by it because it, it is it is the thing that it's my one time a day to me and it gets my day going and you know you just mentioned you just brought up a really interesting fact which we're going to get into during sleep but so many people don't understand what they are what is attacking them yeah. we wake up every day and we you believe that you're you're high performing but something as little as a zinc deficiency can put you behind by miles. Sure. Just a zinc deficiency. And that's like one of the the 150 plus yeah. biomarkers that we could be doing. And you've just had an attack on your innate immune system. And that's huge because it affects the way you think, the way you breathe, the way you perform, yes. the way you sleep. We now know that even one day of sleep deprivation can be detrimental to our immunity and our brain function. So imagine what it's doing over time. And everyone just thinks, but this is just a natural part of aging. Newsflash, dementia is not part of the natural aging process. Diseases are not part of it. So why are we getting it? Why do we have 55 million people worldwide that have this chronic disease? We have to start thinking about this. And it's not just because people are living longer. No. So they can get it. It's be, it's, you're, it's what you're saying is it's, it's preventable. Yeah. It, 100% is preventable. Yeah. So maybe we should talk about sleep. Yeah. Because that's so critical. That's another thing. Like like I said, I got on a schedule yeah. with this, which I'm – Going to bed when it's dark, I'm waking up when maybe it just got light a little bit ago. And I hadn't done that in four years when I started doing that. And it also makes sure that I get like at least seven and a half a night. Mm. Game changer. Game changer, 100%. When you refer to sleep, what I refer to is stages. The only things we're really caring about during sleep is slow wave deep sleep and REM sleep right? Okay. So when we go to sleep, we cycle through these four stages, right? We've got stage one, it's when you're falling asleep. Stage two 
if we're, and by the way, as a neurophysiologist, you, we work in a lab called a PSG. So you go and get a, a, a polysomnography. That's called a sleep All study. big words, man. I know, it's ridiculous. <laughs> but if you were to get a sleep study, that's what it's called, right? Okay. The PSG. And so I've spent many, many hours in this PSG just looking at people sleeping, right? <laughs> it's like ridiculous. Yeah, just staring. I'm like, this is invasive. But um, so what you go through are th uh, these four sleep stages, when you get to stage three, it's called non-REM sleep. It's when we get these on the brain waves, we see these big delta brainwave patterns. We know delta. that you're, yeah, we know that you're in deep sleep. What do you mean by delta? So we've got alpha, beta, gamma, delta okay. brain waves. Yeah, they're, they operate at different hertz. And so we know right then you're in you're in deep sleep. So that's deep sleep. Then we've got REM sleep, which is stage four. And during REM sleep, REM stands for rapid eye movement sleep. Mm -hmm. That's when you're you're literally your eyes during that stage are moving back and forth in a horizontal fashion. That's why it's called rapid eye movement sleep. And during that stage, your brain actually mimics an awake patient, but you are completely paralyzed from the neck down. And Mother Nature created this because it's during that stage that we have a lot of our dreams. Yes. We have memory processing, learning that takes place during that. But she did this. She wanted to paralyze you so you don't end up acting out your dreams. For example, if you were dreaming of flying, we don't want you to get up and walk <laughs> to your, your balcony and fly. So, um, But sleep, the most I think the most beautiful part about it is during like REMS, uh, during deep sleep, for example, we get two major things that happen. One is you get the release of all of your hormones. Most of the hormones, most of your testosterone is released during deep, slow wave sleep. Can you explain like what that means though? Because yeah. like it's not like we're using it during that, right? It's just released. No, that's where you're built. So when so sleep is a repair process for the brain and yes. the body, right? That's why we sleep. We don't sleep just because we've got nothing to do. We, we sleep so we can repair the body and we repair it in many ways. And the repair takes place during deep sleep. So during deep sleep, that's when your body's like, okay, he needs to wake up in the morning. And actually a really good indicator of health for men is a morning erection. Mm. And so, and we, you know, we take that into consideration as well. So you get a lot. <laughs> it's always fun doing these podcasts with Go two ahead. young men. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. So we. I was. So, I held in so many jokes there. You should be proud of me. There are so many backspaces in my head. We won't go, ahead, go then. So you get a lot of the your um, the release of testosterone during that stage. Uh, we get. That's why when we measure testosterone, we look at waking measurements of testosterone. Mm. We get the release of growth hormone. Growth hormone is responsible for the repair of your muscles. So this is why I think that the, the recovery marketing industry is such a Ponzi scheme because it's like the best recovery you can do is sleep. And I see so many people trying to ice bath their way out of proper sleep. It's like you're well, going to sleep four do, hours. You need to but do both. Well, it's, you don't need to do both. Ice bathing is part of the accessories that we'll go into. Okay. So you've got the release of growth hormone and testosterone. And for women, a lot of it, there's estrogen as well that gets released during that stage. Mm. You've got something else that takes place during deep sleep, and that's the activation of something called the glymphatic system. What's that? So it's, an, it's a lymphatic system, you know, the lymph nodes. Yeah, yeah. But we've got one in our brain. Really? Yeah. So during deep, slow wave sleep, your brain acts like a washing machine. So all of the fluid, it's called cerebral spinal fluid. It goes through the brain and it washes through and then it gets expelled. So it's taking with it debris and toxins that build up. What? It just gets expelled through your digestive system? No, not through your digestive yeah, system. Like through the no. blood? Yeah, it just, it gets, yeah, it gets, yeah, it gets rinsed out. Just like the, the same way as like when you do a lymph node rinse out, like if you're, uh, if you're going to go get a lymphatic drainage massage. Okay. So same, same type of mechanism, right? And what we're seeing now is that during that stage, that's when you're releasing the toxic proteins that build up that are responsible for Alzheimer's disease, mm. amyloid beta. That gets cleared out if you activate your if glymphatic system. Yeah. So sleep is like a key to holding it's off It's not Alzheimer's. just sleep. It is slow wave deep sleep. 
Yeah, so you when, when we had been talking back in February and you were going through the whole eye mass thing and mm. too much cortisol in your system, one of the questions you asked me was, how many times a month do you dream, if you had to guess? And I think I said like one or two, maybe yeah. three. You probably dream more often. You just don't remember it. Well, no. I really didn't dream much at all because mm -hmm. I was never getting deep sleep, as it turns out. I was never getting deep sleep. I was never getting REM sleep. I dream every single night now. Do you measure your sleep with anything, a wearable? I actually don't. I want to, but yeah. I like. I know how I felt versus how I feel now. Mm. I'd love to measure it just to be, I, I think that's the next step, but like it's night and day, yeah. no pun intended. I mean, and that's just from one sleep mask. So then it becomes about, okay, great, Louise. And now that we understand that, you know, these two stages are important. What next? Well, we have to take many things into consideration. The quantity, like how many hours you're sleeping. Mm -hmm. The quality is, you know, are you getting into deep and REM sleep? We have to understand what time you're sleeping. Timing is really important. Why I don't is want, that? Timing is timing and the, uh, the, the consistency of your timing. So we, you know, the reliability, we want you to go to bed every night at 10 p.m., right? That is a far better predictor of sleep performance than just, you know, sleeping, you know, eight hours a night every night. Does it matter what your window is? Yeah. So 10 a.m., uh, 10 p.m. till 6 a.m. is so much better than 12 p.m. till 6 a.m. Uh, 12 p.m. till 8 a.m. Right, right, right. I got you. Yeah. Why is that? Because you want to be able to sleep before Midnight, and that comes down to the circadian rhythm and Mother Nature and the sun really? rising. Yeah, so we have this um, we have this really great molecule. It's called dopamine, and oh yeah, yeah. So dopamine is that neuromodulator, neurotransmitter, if you will, that's really involved in our reward system, and it gets released in response to achieving a goal. For example, if you say today. I'm going to go out and I'm going to run one mile. If you run that one mile, you'll be rewarded with dopamine. And that motivates you. It oh, excites yes. you. It tells you you're going to do it again. Yes. The problem you know, that most people have is they set themselves to go and, and run 20 miles. They don't achieve it. They don't get any dopamine and they hate themselves. Mm. Then they never run again. But we won't get into that. Dopamine is, is released also during sleep and – what happens is we wake up with a jolt. We have a lot of dopamine, which propels us to get up out of bed and move on through the day. What happens is dopamine release is blocked. If you see light from the hours of 12 p.m. till 4 a.m. 12 a.m. you mean? 12 a.m. till yeah. 4 a.m. So if you have light exposure during that any time, kind. any kind, and if you're awake, that means you're getting light exposure. Yeah, of right? course. Yeah. So it blocks your ability to produce dopamine. So you wake up and you're already behind the mark because you're not getting the dopamine release. That's some weird mother nature shit because it's it like it knows what – dopamine knows what time it is. Exactly. It all comes down to the sun rising and setting at certain times. So that's one reason. Um the second reason is you just want cons consistency in timing. We're now like we we see in the academic literature that how like when you sleep and the predictability of your sleep is is extremely important. We're not robots, but if you can be sleeping every night mm -hmm. at 10 p.m., that'll be perfect. Yeah, so I set it to I go to bed at like 10:30 now. So it's close enough, I guess. And I wake up at 6:35. So on a weekend sometimes if I got to really work hard on a weekend where I work later, I will literally take an air mattress into this room right here because this is blacked out mm. and still wear the eye mask and have no light exposure like if I go to bed at mm. 1230 or 1 or something like that. And that makes a difference mm. too. Like, like at least getting some of the things right whenever you can if your schedule has to change – Better than nothing. Thank you for watching the video, guys. If you haven't already subscribed, please smash that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here or in the description below.